safety lights. This is part three of this mini series, so I have to build something. So let's build safety lights. Nothing fancy, simple thing, but this could be a product which can save you and your family a life. I need system small enough to fit on the back of a bicycle. I need this system to be battery powered. I need this system to be easily programmable because I will update my product from time to time. I want to be able to update my safety lights with some new features, gadgets and sensors. I want to be fully prepared if chip shortage that happened not quite a while ago happens again. So my code must be MCU agnostic. And I want complete hardware software ecosystem to be from within one company. Because I do not want to waste my time. I want to build my prototype fast. And I don't need getting into conversation with multiple companies and suppliers. Okay, now that I'm all set and ready to write some code, this is what I've got from the last two episodes. And this is what I ended up prototyping and used it in real life, as you saw in the beginning of this episode. Because I want to develop prototypes fast, just like Elon Musk did it with the SpaceX and Starship in particular, I want code for those prototypes to be hardware agnostic. So basically in this stage, in the prototype stage, I don't care about the actual microcontroller, I just want it to work. So all of this actually means I need a single code to work for both of those systems. In essence, I need the same code which I'm going to program into those two microcontrollers. Let's jump back into code and let's do this. Let's create single piece of code which is going to work for both of those MCUs. Okay, I'm going to put this code away. And it will serve me as a reference for our current project, Safety Lights. This project will consist of two parts, two functionalities. First one is going to deal with initializing pins of a microcontroller. And the second one is going to change voltage state of these pins. Anyway, I'm going to insert those two functionalities into our main project. Okay, safety lights in it. Done. Let's insert infinite blinking functionality as well. Nice. And finally, insert safety lights functionality into our main function. I'm just going to rename this main file into hardware agnostic file. Okay, we have the logic of our prototype written down. Let's do the coding part now. When I look at the bare metal code, First thing that caught my attention is configuring pin B0 to have output functionality. Let's abstract it a little bit. Output functionality. Microcontroller has input functionality as well, right? It can sense input as well as output something on its pins. So input output functionality. When you analyze data sheets of microcontrollers nowadays, you're going to see input output or general purpose input output or GPIO in short naming convention in them. Okay, while I was talking about it, I got into library manager in which you can observe some libraries, right? And you can observe general purpose input output library as well. Well, enable it, just enable it. Copy this code, this alias basically, close bare metal code source file for now and paste this include directive in the beginning of this hardware agnostic file. With this move, I basically enabled digital output library, digital output driver, which is going to help me initialize appropriate general purpose input output pin on a microcontroller. That's number one thing. And the second thing would be that I will be able to change voltage level on a microcontroller's pin from high to low and vice versa from low to high. So I will just do it. I will just write down the code and I will explain it. I will now populate safety lights init functionality. First of all, I want to initialize a pin, so I will utilize digital out init functionality, which I showed you in the driver digital out header file a moment ago. I will be needing two parameters to sort out. The first one is some kind of a digital out type. Okay. And the second one is basically a pin. In our case, we just want to make it work. So I know what pin worked perfectly nice when I was utilizing bare metal code. It was pin pb0. Nice. Okay, let's return to the first one, to the first parameter, digital out t type, which basically defined pin base and its appropriate mask. So I'm going to copy this type, digital out type, 
and paste it in the beginning of this hardware agnostic file and give appropriate name for the instance of this type. Now, because I have created the instance of the needed type, I will insert it as a first argument of this digital out in its functionality. And of course, because it expects a pointer, I will insert address of operator as a prefix. Okay, nice. Project is building. That's something. Let's open bare metal source file once again to summarize our current progress. Okay, initializing of a pin done. Let's do the apply low voltage state thing right now. Let's return to the header file of the library, which we are currently utilizing GPIO library, digital output library to be more precise. Because I want to apply low voltage state on the pin, I will not use digital out high functionality. I will make use of a digital out low functionality. Okay, let's copy it. Then return to the hardware agnostic source file and paste it over here. By pressing control space on my keyboard, I'm able to reason I need an argument to be passed in. Okay, and this argument is of type digital out type, digital out T. Okay, I'm going to pass in this argument because I want this pin to go low, to go in a reset state. Safety lights init function done. I'm going to focus on the blinking thing right now. When I analyze bare metal code, it's basically just switching between low voltage state and high voltage state and having a pause thing in between them. Okay, safety lights blink functionality done. I'm going to test this version 2 of our code right now. I will program pic 18 f 47 k 42 microcontroller MCU we used in the previous two episodes. Nice, I'm fine with that. To summarize, on the right side I've got a piece of code which is blink and LED, but is more suitable for the one particular microcontroller. And on the left side I've got a piece of code which is likely going to work for the majority of microcontrollers supported by this library by this software developing it to be more concrete. And believe me, this list of supported microcontrollers is massive. You can check it out on the GitHub page of this SDK, of this software development kit. But wait, wait, not every microcontroller has pin PP0. In the beginning of this episode, while I was talking about what were my requirements of my prototype, I talked about scalability. I want this prototype to be feature scalable. Observe this socket. This will give me a scalability in terms of features I might add or remove in the future. In example, proximity sensor or camera in front of my bicycle, etc. etc. This socket, by the way, had been recognized worldwide and it is called Microbus. Nevertheless, I will use this socket's naming convention to abstract pins because I want to speed up myself and to be able to use this code in every embedded board which has microbus socket on it. Back to coding. Let's finish it up. I'm going to install microbus library into my project like this and copy this alias into my main source file. Now let's explore what is under the hood of this alias. I've got this header file in which I've got macro called microbus and it says it will concatenate microbus index. So, microbus 1, 2, 3, wait, the actual pin. So, analog pin, PWM pin, chip select pin, interrupt pin, etc. Let's copy it and use it right away because it will help me not needing to know the exact pin name of a microcontroller. Okay, so microbus. Then I'm gonna do braces. Then I'm gonna look at the actual board and I'm going to focus on the microbus socket's number. I want to make use of a microbus 1 socket. So, I will type in number 1. That would be my first argument. The second one would be whichever pin I want to blink. So by looking at the pinout specification of this microbus standard, I could, for example, make use of a PWM pin. But let's get back to coding. And just for fun's sake, copy and paste this macro as the second argument. Let's, let's, let's build it. <laughs> okay, okay. Besides the error message, which is, it's awesome when you get errors, this macro, microbus macro, basically concatenated those two arguments number one and the microbus PWM in my case. Right, let's resolve this issue that we've got. Microbus socket must be placed on some kind of a board, physical board, in order for it to work. Well, let's return to the library manager and try to find a connection between microbus socket on one side and our code on the other side. That connection would be a board, board software library. I will enable it, then copy this alias, insert it into hardware agnostic source file, and try to build my project now. Nice, it actually is building. 
I'm just going to show you what's under the hood of this board alias. Those are basically a macro definitions of the board I'm currently using. There is a microbus 1 macro defined, so this microbus socket with this number actually exists on the board I'm currently using. I can utilize this macro in my source file then. Nice, this looks better, and someone who looks at this code will have a better understanding of a situation. Prototype testing in progress. I'm going to grab this one first. It has a code grip programmer device on board. I'm going to program it and the result, good. The second one, I'm going to connect standalone code grip programmer device on it, then program it. And the second result is, okay, that's, that's nice. That's, that's perfect. And this is how you plan, develop and test your prototype. I understand this project I've done is of a rudimental type, it's simple. But remember, this mini-series is all about students, and this is supposed to be a fun and educational introduction into embedded world. Okay, I hope I'll see you in the next one. Until then, write down your idea, prepare for execution, and execute. My name is Branko, and thanks for watching.